Hi everyone, my name is Haylin. In this video, we are going to compare this flash against this studio flash. So let's find out whether that hot shoe flash is good enough for you or you need to upgrade to studio flashes. What are the differences and the advantages? Let's go. Why are you sitting there smiling? Now? <laughs> no. <laughs> Oh, a quick message before we start. Head on to my e-learning website here. We are celebrating our 1111 promo. What is 1111? And if you head on to my website now, everything, all the e-learnings in there, the premium courses, the all access are undergoing 50% discount now. And here's one more good news. We are launching a new e-learning course. How to be a successful freelance photographer. It's under pre-launch now. If you sign up now, you save tremendously. So quick, before you watch this video, hit pause now, go on to the website and grab your 50% promo because this is a limited time offer. And now let's start. One of the biggest advantages of a hot shoe flash for a shoot like this, it's so small and the intensity is not strong enough. I can position this directly in front of the subject, near the subject. This is called near light photography. Take a look at this diagram. This is where the light is. This is where the subject, this is where the photographer is. This is called near light photography, nearer to the subject. As opposed to this, this is what I call far light photography. If you are a subscriber of my premium courses, if you head onto this section, you'll be able to find this particular lesson where I teach the difference between near light and far light. And personally, I like to shoot with a near light configuration because when I'm away shooting, I can see where the light is and get shots like this. It's easier to manage, it's more intuitive, but you choose near light, far light up to you because you can still put this far away. As you can see, being able to see my flash being near light, it's more intuitive for me. And we can get shots like this now. And one of the most valuable things with working with hot shoe flash, it sits on the swivel on the light stand so I can orientate the light easier. So I can do stuff like this. This is priceless. Changing the power would be so much easier with a hot shoe flash because the interface is more intuitive and the modes that you have on a hot shoe flash is amazing. You have TTL, you have manual mode, you have multi mode and you have that S1, S2, you can trigger it effortlessly. And the hot shoe flashes are powered by AA batteries, easy to use. The hot shoe flash always has a zoom feature that allows me to move the lamp head in or out. Very easy to use. And with this, I can do shots like this. Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, to open it, close back down a little bit. That's nice. And chin up a little bit and a cheek, cheeky smile. One, two, go. The most fantastic point about hot shoe flashes, you can stick them anywhere and do fantastic shoots like this. And one, two, go. Hey, what is this? The portability of hot shoe flashes are amazing, which means that I can easily pack them into padded foam bags like this and bring them out for outdoor shoots. In fact, I can pack six in this small little bag plus batteries. And that's why I love to use these outdoor shoots. And music to your ears, the most important point, the hot shoe flashes are always cheaper than the studio flashes. In fact, one studio flash like this can buy this many hot shoe flashes. So I always believe that the more, the better. You can stick them in odd places and have five flashes for one shoot. Right? It's kind of like having five cars. If one breaks down, just put it in the garage, drive the other one, right? And if that breaks down, just put it in you know, friend's house and drive the other one. And studio flashes, they are so useful because they are so intense and have a bigger coverage. You can have your model standing really like 10 feet away and still get amazing coverage. Let me show you what I mean. I can have one studio flash there and still get amazing shots of Haley full body with her high heels even looking like this. And viewers, you must be thinking like, why is my softbox oriented that way? Viewers, let me share with you a tip. If you're like me, lazy to run to the studio store just to get a taller softbox, here's what you can do. Remove this, go to the back and undo the knob here and rotate your softbox to have a diamond shape like this orientation. That way, this is your height now. And only then you raise this up and voila, you have a taller softbox without running to the back 
because with her high heel shoes now, look at how tall she looks. Ah, oh, I'm sorry, my high heels are tall. And what I love about Studio Flash is the mounts which allows you to put in a wide array of modifiers, softbox, strip banks, beauty dishes, bundles, snoots. Okay. Higher? Higher, higher. Alright. Okay. Good. The modeling light and continuous light of a studio flash is really an impressive asset to have. It lets you visualize where the highlights, mid-tone and shadow is of a shoot before you even take that click. So yeah, that's a priceless asset for a studio flash. And studio lights will always make you and your studio look more professional. Well, to be honest, I do know of clients and agencies that will only give you projects if you own studio lights. And to be honest, there are situations where the agency would even ask you what are the brands of studio lights that you own. If you don't own those big trees, then you may not even get the job. Studio flashes are more versatile for two reasons. They are big and they support a huge array of modifiers. So you have modifiers that will make your shoots and lights bigger and there are modifiers that will restrict light and make the light smaller. So when you have big lights, you can actually make them smaller. But if you have small lights like this flash here, you cannot make them bigger. So in other words, short like me can never be tall like Haley. Haley, on the other hand, can be short. She just have to kneel down a little bit. So that's one of the benefits of studio lights. Versatile. And this is how studio flash get powered from the mains or portable power like this. So the two choices you have is fantastic. But when it comes to hot shoe flash, you only can power them with AA batteries. You cannot get it off the main. So that's a plus point, which means I can bring the studio flash outdoor and have external power and at the same time work in the studio for hours and not run out of batteries. Earlier on, I mentioned that the hot shoe flash, the power increments are really accurate. They go up one third of a stop incrementally because of the digital control. Very accurate. But you know what I like about the studio flashes? This knob here. Yijong, this is what I like. Just put a thumb to this and you start turning this. And most of the time, new users find this number so cryptic and not understandable. Does it mean it's one stop? Well, the true fact is that you don't actually work this way. What I normally do with a flash that I do not know, I put it half power and then take a shot and see if it's overexposed, then I just need to power it down one stop at a time. That's what I like about studio flashes with power knobs like this. Easy to use, brainless. I bet you like this video. If you do, please do three things for me. First, like this video. Second, share this video. And third, please subscribe to this channel because this is my first appearance in this channel and I would really love to come back. Or else, this guy is going to give you a mouthful about it. Yeah, you girl, you better do well. We're gonna, we need to have like 1,000 views in the first 30 minutes. If, we, if that's not happening, not just you lose your job, I'm going to my job. So please hit subscribe, right? We'll see you in the next episode. And don't forget, visit my website and check out the e-learning contents. But when it comes to the hot shoe flash, Yichong, you know what I... Hot shoe flash. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Turn your face to your right. Wait, right. This girl, she does well in talking, she does well in posing, but she suck in direction. <laughs> hey, come here. Then she say, going there, right? <laughs> here. <laughs> Viewers, Helen will now demonstrate to you by lifting her left hand. <laughs> she literally took up her right hand. <laughs> I asked her how old she is, and then I asked her to guess my age, and she freaking said 36. I'm not sure to be happy or offended now. <laughs> so, okay, try again. That wasn't correct. 46. <laughs> okay, try again. That wasn't correct either, Haley. Be careful where you go now. <laughs> 45. <laughs> <laughs> Viewers, let Haley know how old I am. Write down in the comment section. <laughs> You gotta watch our channel a little bit more, yeah? Okay. I'm, I'm the world's oldest YouTube photographer, perhaps. Apart from maybe this guy. <laughs>